I will now request Dr. Zora Singh, our Chief Guest, guest of Honor. So Dr. Zora Singh is Chancellor for Desh Bhagat University. He started his profession as a doctor and practiced as a child specialist for 15 years. Before his calling to do something for the society, led him into the field of education. And starting in 1996, he has successfully established 21 educational institutions across Punjab, Chandigarh and Kenya. They were accorded the state university status by government of Punjab in 2012. He has been socially active, member of large number of organizations, which last list runs into four pages. He is a philanthropist also, started an NGO, Hara Punjab, Khara Punjab, which is committed to the environmental protection, routing out social evils like female fertilizer, dairy, drug abuse. This organization has been instrumental in distributing almost 60,000 saplings for greening Punjab and the target is to distribute one lakh. He has much awarded and a uh, person I have privileged to present before you, Dr. Zora Singh. Thank you, Anagi. Uh, on the occasion of the panel discussion on bridging gaps, demystifying skill development, and also the release of a study a report by this company. Uh, I welcome the chief guest of today, uh, Shri Honorable Minister, uh, Mr. Madam Mitraji, Honorable Minister for Technical Education, Industry and uh, Commerce. I welcome the <coughs> other panelists. I welcome Mr. Anurag Ji, Rohit Chawla, Gagan Chawla Ji, I welcome my friend Dhrindar Ji, Mahal my colleagues and the, the most honoured press members. I welcome you all over here. And this company, uh, Bridging Gaps, I was confused first that uh, whether they are Bridging Gaps or they are the name of the company. Uh, finally, I settled that it is the name of the company only because I was, not know, I was knowing Mr. Anurag only for the years, but uh, not the name of the company and they are doing a human task to bridge this gap between the academia and uh, industry as uh, the uh, vital uh, figures were given, data was given that uh, 25 or 30 percent uh, manpower which is being generated by the Indian education industry is uh, not uh, employable. So it's a very very vital issue and uh, of course this company is uh, uh, tigering the manpower. They are empowering the manpower to make them employable. As uh, I was uh, going through the uh, observations of Mr. Kamal Bhardwaji, he, was, he rightly said that why the industry should teach the youngsters when they have come from the institution, they have qualified, they have obtained a degree or postgraduate or diploma whatsoever, but they are not employable, they have to train. But I feel of course, it's true that whatsoever the organization structure is, any newcomer, howsoever qualified he might be, he always has to be taught and imbibed in the setup, and he has to given some the, the the value system of the company, value system of the organization, the the overall environment of the company, and this is the part of the thing. But uh, the main emphasis given by him was that there is a gap and why the, why the industry and this gap is being filled by the, this bridging gap company and uh, this uh, skill development I think uh, we, we were talking about two different uh, verticals one was the skill development as a skill development initiated by the government of India and the government of Punjab as uh, South India came into higher education about three decades back while North India came into higher education about two decades back. We were laggard by one decade from the uh, South India. And for the last about a decade or so, we are talking about skill development. It may be the Prime Minister of the country and the Honorable Chief Minister of the state. They are emphasizing right now on the skill development. And the skill development, we talk on every forum. And I, I found some of the uh, issues uh, with the NSDC as well. I was given to understand that uh, we started this N N NSDC programs about uh, uh, seven, eight years back. And then the issue was that 
there was a condition, I don't know whether, whether it's the government of India or the government of Punjab condition, that you will have to show this much of employability. Only then you will be given the next batch. So, so some of the, I think uh, these are the bureaucratic hurdles. The, let's come to the grassroots level, understand the uh, difficulties of the uh, institutions as well, and then push it up for further um, uh, implementation of the programs. If we simply said that you first employ 25% and then really it was reduced, for first is 50% then 25% then it's 10%, but is it applicable? Thus, can any government you know, can commit this thing that we will give this minimum employment? Let's be practical and let's be more uh, realistic about the uh, issues. Uh, the issue of uh, Honing of the skills. One is, as, uh, as Ms. Malvika, uh, Ms. Malvika told that, uh, one is the uh, giving the skills, and second is upgrading the skills, honing the skills. And uh, honing the skill, we, we involve uh, basically and most important constituent of that is uh, the communication skills, of course. Of course, the improvement of the, uh, of the behavioral techniques and other things as well, so that we can find a person who is really ready to join the market but he is not suitable to join the market how we can hone the skills like a handling of phone interview skills and such things so we need to create a manpower who can handle phones who can handle manpower at different desk and likewise they can communicate very well they might be knowing a great deal of knowledge in them but they cannot express and uh, maybe our nurses or doctors, they have to clear the IELTS examination to go, go abroad. I was in North America uh, only uh, 10 days back uh, for a short trip of 15 days. What I found that uh, I was taken to the, uh, first of all, they call the state uh, assembly as the parliament. I was taken to the uh, Ontario parliament there and uh, they, they made a mention of my name, acknowledged and all that. That is a leave about this issue. And what I came to know about uh, the, the, the the integrity and the transparency of the working of the country is that the Prime Minister of Ontario and for that matter of other states as well, he is not entitled to have a chauffeur. I, I couldn't believe. And they said that the governor of the state is entitled to have chauffeur for one day when there is some official function. So we have to come up with that. I said, why it's so? They said that he draws a salary and he doesn't afford the driver. And the dignity of labor is such that you go any house there, they will tell you to remove your shoes first of all. Why? I was just jiving with somebody, and like that. It was in every house. They said that we have to clean our house every, every day, ourselves only. It may be the toilet, it may be the floor, it may be the other things. We have to do ourselves. And I said, uh, you don't have the manpower to clean it. They said, we can, we can hire, but then we'll have to pay minimum wages of $10 per hour. And we also earn this much. <laughs> so, the, when, we, when we talk about the skill development and the upgradation of the skill, uh, honing of skills, the dignity of a labor, labor should also be emphasized and we should believe that what's what we are doing, we are doing for our own self, for our own community, for our own society, for our own nation, and for our own mother earth. At uh, uh, Desh Bhagat, we are uh, running uh, this uh, faculty development programs to hone up the skills, the uh, communication skills uh, programs as well, faculty development programs as well. We keep on interacting with the industry. Every fortnight we call some industries there. We ask their needs and we ask their problems they face with the youngsters and all that. And uh, we keep on propping up what's all with the gray areas, how to seal them, and how to make more vibrant curriculum. And today is a great day when the, the industry, academia, and the government as well is together here. Because it's the three prongs of uh, this uh, issue who can solve this issue. Because most of the times we have, I have uh, uh, attended so many industry academ academia interface, but the government is missing. Now the government is amongst us and uh, particularly the relevant minister is also with us. So we can today forge some sort, sort of alliance. 
uh, I had the opportunity to invite Mr. Madan Mithalji in my institute only uh, 20 days back, 25 days back. So he was very generous to talk to my students, even faculty. And at every level, he understood the problem of the private institutes. And he lauded the role of private institutes. And I believe that the private institutes who are contributing in Punjab particularly 97% of higher education, they should be acknowledged and they should be given their due share. And that's all. Thank you very much. All